You can do better than that. I said, praise the Lord. I welcome you to this session, Life Building, Ministry for Booking, um, session that we have this morning. And I pray that every word that is made for you will get to you. Penetrate your heart. Turn you around and move you on to higher heights in this new year in Jesus' name. Our lives, our ministries will never be the same again. Give me good amen. amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you today. We bless your name. How great, how good, how glorious you are. We're asking, Lord, that today, this will be a session when the word will transform every life. Amen. And put us on a journey, on a road to progress to the destiny that you have for every one of us. Amen. Magnify your holy name and magnify your power in every life even today in jesus name amen. we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray amen. god bless you you can sit down as we come to our workers ministers professional uh, session this conference for the four days today and tomorrow and Monday and Tuesday, I've been looking at the history of the early church. And that is the Acts of the Apostles. Other people have said in the Acts of the Holy Ghost. Others have said in the Acts of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the disciples and the apostles, as they ministered in the strength and the power of Christ. And as we look at the Acts of the Apostles, there are four things that come out very well. Number one, the Word. As you go from the first chapter to the end of the chapter, you find the Word. Number two is the name, the name of Jesus. And as you go through, you'll find how Christ had given his name to the church, to the believer, to the minister. Number three, important uh, personality in the acts of the apostles the holy ghost the holy ghost in his power in his enablement and the holy ghost is sending them forth empowering them and making them to fulfill the ministry that christ has called them to number four is the heavenly vision the heavenly vision already you'll find how christ himself crafted the vision for them in Acts chapter 1 and then you go to chapter 2 and then to the end of the Acts of the Apostles you'll find the heavenly vision. Number 1 the Word. Number 2 the Holy Spirit. Number 3 the name. The name of Jesus. Number 4 the heavenly vision. Now as we look at the Acts of the Apostles I'm going to use those letters A C T S as I go on today, I'm talking on A. A is for authority. And then C is the confirmation. As you go through the Acts of the Apostles, you see the A there. You see the authority there. They moved in power. They moved in authority. And the Lord so infused them, energized them, empowered them. Every word, every act, every move, every step with authority. Number two, see, you'll find confirmation. Confirmation. The Lord confirmed their word. To the sinners, he confirmed their word. To the sick, he confirmed their word. And to the demon possessed, having spirit of divination, he confirmed the word. Acts A for authority. And C for confirmation. T, you'll find transformation. As you go through the Acts of the Apostles, you'll find transformation. The apostles themselves were, trans they were transformed 
from weakness unto strength, from powerlessness unto power, from hopelessness unto hope. And they were moved away and transformed from tiredness and fearfulness and timidity, and they came to a point when the religion of the day even became afraid of them. Then you are going to find the transformation of sinners to says you're going to find the transformation of those who are sick and they became well transformation a for authority c for confirmation and t for transformation s is for sustenance you're going to find as they started they continued until they came to the very peak and to the very end they were not unfinished buildings. You see, you find a lot of unfinished projects around. And the tragedy of the life of anyone is when he becomes an unfinished personality. The Lord wanted him to sustain the power and the strength and the vision and the goal and keep on moving on until he reaches his destiny. But Unfortunately for many people, they have, the, they have the syndrome of becoming unfinished projects. And so, they're going to find that in the Acts of the Apostles, that the sustainers, and those are the things we're building on, and by the time we finish, you'll not be the same again. Your life, your family, your ministry, your profession, and the vision you have, and the goal you have, you'll not be the same again in Jesus' name. you become a better man, a better woman, a better minister, a better preacher, a better singer, a better professional. As we go through, and I want to plead with you, come every morning. You will be glad you came. Can I have a good by Elsa State? Amen. Today we'll speak, we're dealing with number one. And number one is authority. Authority of the word in life and ministry. Let's look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 29. Acts chapter 4, verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. That's what you are looking for. They may speak thy word. You are going to find that the central theme in the Acts of the Apostles. Then it tells us in verse 30, it says in verse 30, by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. The name, the name of Jesus. That's another focal, central point in the Acts of the Apostles. In verse 31, it says, and when they had prayed, the place was shaking when they were assembled together and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. That's, that's what I was telling you, the word was 39. The name, verse 30, and the Holy Ghost in verse 31, and they speak the word of God with boldness. And let's look at Acts chapter 10 and verse 44. Acts chapter 10, verse 44, and while Peter yet speak these words, not that, while Peter yet speak, these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And then chapter, two, chapter 19, verse 20, it says, And mightily grew the word of God. Mightily grew the word of God. It grew in the heart of everyone. It grew in the life of everyone. It grew in the family of everyone. It grew in the community, every community. It grew everywhere. Mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. That, that's what happened in the Acts of the Apostles. In the authority of the word prevailing on every life, 
prevailing on every individual until today. That's the reason why your minister, let the word prevail in your ministry. The word on diluted words, the word on adulterated word, the word, the uncompromising word, the word, the word that takes us from where we are to where we ought to be. And I pray that during this conference and after this conference and all through your life of ministering, the word will prevail in your life, in your ministry, in Jesus' name. Every time I say in Jesus' name, honor that name by saying good, good, great, by yells at stage, amen. Today, authority of the word in life and ministry. Three things we're looking at. Number one, we're looking at the persistent preaching of the word of the gospel. Go through the book of Acts. You'll find out the reason why they had the success they had, the progress they had, and the reason why they penetrated everywhere. And the Gentiles shouted, These that have turned the world upside down and come hither also is because of their persistent preaching of the word of the gospel. Number two, the profitable purpose of the word of his grace. Yes, the word, the word of God. Yes, the word, the word of his grace. The profitable purpose of the word of his grace. Number three, yeah, the prevailing power. When those people spoke the word, it had power. Power came out of them. Power came through them. Power came from them and touched their hearts and the lives of all the hearers. It's the power that prevails, the power of the world. It wasn't their personality. It wasn't their graduate certificate. It wasn't their whatever natural skill. It was the word. And everyone, and the word is still there today. And the word is as mighty, it's as powerful as Christ himself, the personalized word. And so when we have the word, when we possess the word, and when we own the word, and when we identify, if I were the word, and then the word comes out, it will have the prevailing power. The prevailing power of the word of God. Have you noticed that, number one, word of the gospel? Number two, the word of his grace. Number three, the word of God. Let's look at number one there. Number one is the persistent preaching of the word of the gospel. Acts chapter 8, verse 25. In Acts chapter 8, verse 25, and they, when they are testified and preached the word, and preached the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem preaching the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. And look at chapter 15, verse 7. In chapter 15, verse 7, and when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel. Should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Number one, then their persistent preaching of the word of the gospel. Three things we'll find here. Number one, commitment to the preaching of the word of the gospel. Commitment. They gave their lives. They committed their lives. They focused their lives to the preaching of the word of the gospel. There was no diversion. There was no deviation. There was no distraction. Just total committed word of God. That's what he did. Commitment to the preaching of the word of the gospel. Number two, courage while proclaiming the word of the gospel. They could have chickened out. They could have been timid. The powers that be, 
the religious power of the day wanted to clamp down on them. I wanted to shut them up. I wanted to muscle their mouths in that community. As well as in your community, it takes the courage to proclaim the word of the gospel. If you're lacking in courage, this session, courage will penetrate your life. Amen. Will give you a new backbone that you'll be able to say, I didn't know that this strength was there before. The strength, the power, the courage you've never discovered before will come to you in Jesus' name. Amen. The courage while proclaiming the word of the gospel. Number three, conversions through preaching the word of the gospel. That's the goal. That's the goal. Who wants to just preach without having results? Who wants to just preach without depopulating hell? Who wants to just preach without populating heaven? Who wants to just preach without having the word penetrate the heart, the life of the people that are hearing conversions? Not just one, many multitudes of confessions through the preaching of the word of the gospel. Let's look at number one there. Number one is commitment to preaching the word of the gospel. Acts chapter 4 again, verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants. The threatenings were made to drive them back to the little circle. To drive them back to the little temple. To drive them back to their houses and hide. Just like after Christ was crucified. So that they hide in their shell. And they will not come up. But now they said, Lord, behold their threatenings at this time. Their threatenings will not drive the church back to their cocoon. Amen. The church will rise up. Amen. And the church, in spite or despite the threatenings, it says, Grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word, not our word, not your denominational word. Not your religious word, the word of God, which is the word of the gospel. Look at verse 31. It says in verse 31, and when they had prayed, you'll find that prayer very important in the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 1, they prayed for the men and the women. Chapter 2, they prayed great signs, wonders happened. Chapter 3, they prayed silver and gold, and I none in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And then, chapter 4, they prayed, they prayed here. Chapter 5, they prayed, and even the shadow of Peter began to heal the people. And chapter 6, they prayed, and they said, we will commit ourselves to the ministry of the word and to prayer. And chapter 7, you find uh, Stephen, <clears throat> he looked up and he said, I see the heavens open. Chapter 8, Stephen prayed. Chapter 9, they called Peter to the house where Dorcas had died. He prayed. As you go through the Acts of the Apostles, prayer, prayer, prayer. And when that becomes a part of your life, that you are known for praying, short prayer, long prayer, night prayer, day prayer, and prayer every time the power of the Lord will descend upon your life like never before in Jesus' name. And it says, and when they had prayed, the place was shaking when they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they speak the word of God with boldness. Show me a minister. 
Show me a worker. Show me a leader. Show me a preacher that, you know, before he comes to preach, he's uh, socializing, shaking hands with that, shaking hands with that, and talking to them about the weather, about politics, about this and that. And then when the time of ministration comes, he comes out and is ready to preach. No, he's not ready to preach. They preach. And after the prayer, the power of God saturated them and then because their lives were lives of praying they spoke the word of God with boldness look at chapter 6 I'm reading from verse 2 there Acts chapter 6 verse 2 then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said it is not reason it is not reasonable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. And then in verse, uh, in verse 4, it tells us, But we will give ourselves continually to prayer. You see their commitment? That's why they had the success they had. And if we're going to have a similar success, we're going to give ourselves continually, continuously to prayer and to the ministry of the word of the word. Then in chapter 8, we're reading from verse 4. In chapter 8, verse 4, is this a therefore day that was scattered abroad, went everywhere, preaching the word. Preaching the word. You see their concentration. You see their commitment. It was to the word. And I pray that we too, in our generation, at our own time, with the encouragement and the examples that we we'll see in the Acts of the Apostles, we too will commit ourselves to the preaching of the word of the gospel. Look at number two there. Number two there is the courage while proclaiming the word of the gospel. The courage while proclaiming the word of the gospel of all professions that we have. Of all professions that we can have. There is none that demands courage at the work of the minister. You see, somebody is a tailor. There is no threat. Somebody, everybody wants the tailor a good tailor. I want him to sew this good dress for me. He, he doesn't need courage. All he needs to do is have a skill. Look at the doctor. A doctor doesn't need, um, well, we need courage and everything, but she you know, doesn't need courage like we think of courage. Somebody is sick, they're running to the doctor. They want him. They appreciate him. And they're going to pay him for his service. Look at the engineer. Courage. What does he need? The courage for he has the skill. He knows how to construct the road and the bridge, but the preacher that is going to snatch the sinner out of the hand of the devil, my mind, he needs courage. The preacher that is going to turn the people away from their idolatry and turn them unto God, a creator, he needs courage. The preacher that is going to do something and is going to preach the word of God and the Gentiles will say, you bring strange things to our ears. What kind of message is that? Because the message of the preacher, the word, affects the life, affects the family, affects the community, affects the country. That man is courage. And the boldness and the strength of character and the courage you need, the Lord impart it into your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Courage while proclaiming the word of the gospel. Look at Acts chapter 14, chapter 4, verse 18. And when they, and they called them, and he commanded them not to preach at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Look at all those other professions. Nobody is going to tell a teacher of chemistry, mathematics, biology, and they say, now, don't teach the curriculum. They'll never say that. They want, to, they want him to teach over time. They'll never tell somebody who is rendering service to the community. Now, don't try that service again. They want the service more and more. When the water breaks down your house, you want the man 
to come and fix all those things. When electricity breaks down in your house, you want him to come quick, quick. Nobody is going to say, don't do that again. But in the preacher that is turning them from darkness to light is the preacher that is asking for transformation of life that will have the challenge and they will say you talk too much about heaven let's live here on earth and let us have the good on earth here so don't talk about heaven anymore don't talk about holiness anymore don't talk about jesus anymore we we'll have that challenge but courage will see you through I said, courage will see you through. And then we're told in verse 19, in verse 19 then, but Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether well, it be right in the sight of God to hack in unto you, to bend unto you, to bow before you, to submit unto you. Whether well, it be right in the sight of the Lord to fear the creature more than the creator, judge ye. But, look at verse 20, they said, for we cannot but speak, that's the word again, we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Look at chapter 5, chapter 5, verse 17 of the Acts of the Apostles, then the high priest rose up and all day that were with him, which is of the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation. Can you walk when people look at you and you can see on their faces they are angry, they are filled with uh, indignation. That's what filled means in their heart. There is uh, no space for love for mercy, for gentleness, for kindness, for cooperation, their whole heart filled with indignation and anger. And it came to their face, or their faces. Can you minister in that condition? Can you still preach the gospel and proclaim the gospel when all eyes are on you? All their faces are turned towards you. And they were filled with indignation. That's when to know whether you are timid or courageous. That's when to know whether you are the cult of God or you just ran without being called. But look at verse 18. In verse 18, and they laid their hands on the apostles and they put them in the common prison. Now, nobody is going to put you in the common prison uh, for, uh, you know, sweeping the floor and making uh, the environment clean, uh, keep the nation clean. Nobody is going to put you in prison because you're a good, conscientious farmer and you're feeding the nation. But the people of the world, they know no better. The people that have the greatest and the highest impact and ministry, preparing people for heaven, preparing people for blessings here on earth, those are the people they want to imprison. Those are the people they want to intimidate. But it's going to take courage, the courage of character, the courage of identification with Christ. When you proclaim the word of the gospel, it says they laid their hands on them, on the apostles, and they put them in the common prison. Then in verse 19, we're told in verse 19 what the angel of the Lord did, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors. Your prison doors will open. You will not remain there. The power that shakes the foundation of every prison will shake your prison. Will open the prison doors. This morning you are coming out. Where fear has put you. Fear imprisons us. Timidity imprisons us. Bad thinking imprisons us. Negative thinking 
the princes of they have not come they are coming they are coming they're going to get at me and they're going to punish me fear the fear of suffering affliction in your body they lay that thing on me that fear imprisons people and they go into their shell they go into their prison and then they are there and then we say pastor so and so it's a time for ministry let's go out and let's have an outrage or oh, they say they have seen enough they cannot come out again but now after this day you will come out Amen. whatever imprisons you everything the chains and the shackles of the enemy will be cancelled in your life in jesus name Amen. the angels are still in ministry they're ministering to those who are the heirs of salvation but the angel of the lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said in verse 20 it says go stand and speak that contradicts what the Sanhedrin had said what those leaders of the nation what they had said now when human beings command you to do something don't run yet don't hide ask yourself what does God say? What does heaven say? If earth says something, and all of earth join together and they say something, don't panic. Look to the heavens. What does heaven say? And when you get the word from heaven, run. I said run. Amen. And you run in the path of duty in Jesus' name. Amen. A new message has come. Go, stand, and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. All the words of this life. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, and when they had brought them, they set them before the council and the high priest asked them verse 28 saying did not we strictly command you that you should not teach in this name and behold you have filled jerusalem i pray you'll feel by yourself Amen. every community every village every town every everywhere even the rivers and everywhere you feel everywhere with the word of the gospel in jesus name we have filled jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us if you knew peter before the cross this would have made his knees to be shaking knocking one another but now, verse 29, in verse 29, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, Peter and the other apostles, when all the ministers of the gospel, the preachers of the gospel, without exception, Peter, the head of them, and the rest of them, all of them, when they can answer with courage, there is hope for our nation. Amen. When they can take the word of God and they don't care, they don't mind what wind may be blowing and they go forth in the strength of the Lord. There is hope for every church and for every ministry. Amen. And Peter and the rest and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Check that up in your life. Are there areas of your life where you break your life into compartments? One, two, three, maybe up to ten. And you find among the ten, in eight areas of your life, out of ten, you are obeying men more than God. You are living under the fear and the threat of men. You are bowing down to the commandments of men and you are cheapening out 
because of what men have said or what men are doing. Are you going to be a real miss about when you bring all the ten areas, every area of your life under the control of the Almighty God? And you say, well, rather obey God than men. That's courage. I said that's courage. I pray that that courage will impact every one of your lives in Jesus' name. We're now looking at number three here. Number three, the conversions that came through preaching the word of his gospel. The gospel is glad news. The gospel is that Jesus died, he was buried, he rose again for our justification. The gospel is that God loves everyone. He doesn't love their sinner. He loves the sinner, every sinner. And Christ has died so that their sins can be forgiven. They can be set free. They can be saved. And a new life can come unto them. That's conversion. When that transition, transformation, conversion, change, supernatural so change has taken place in the life of a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, a community. That's conversion. And those conversions came through the preaching of the word of the gospel. Look at Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 36. Acts chapter 2. We're reading from verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made the same Christ whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Verse 37, it says, And now, when they heard this, they were preached in their heart. They were preached in their heart. They were preached in their heart. No change happens without being preached in our heart. The sinner is preached in his heart, then he asks for salvation. The believer is preached in his heart, then he looks up to God. I want to go higher. The husband is preached in his heart. And he says, God, I see myself, make me a better husband. The student is preached in his heart, Lord, I know I'm lazy and I want a change. It is the pricking of the heart, the conviction of the heart that brings sorrow in the heart, shame in the heart. Why am I like this? And it is that that leads us to a better life. The pastor, the preacher is preached in his heart. I have not been studying the word of God. I have not been giving the word of God. I am sorrowful in my heart. I have not been doing my best to reach the people. It is when anyone professional, anyone preacher, anyone in a family, anyone anywhere, is when you preach in your heart that you want a change. You want a transformation. And you want a new life to come. Now, when they had this, they were preached in their heart. And they said unto Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And he told them in verse 38, it says, repent, repent, turn around, change your mind. The way you've been going is not the way that will lead to eternal happiness. And so repent, turn around. Look at uh, verse uh, 41 there. It says in verse 41, Then they that gladly received his word. It's the word. It's the ministry of the word. The word of the gospel. The preaching of the word of the gospel that brings the conversions. And they... Well, then uh, that gladly received this word were baptized and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls conversions look at chapter 4 verse 4 and it says how be it many of them uh, which heard 
the word, the word, the word, believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. Look at chapter 11, chapter 11, verse 19. Now, they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. Look at verse 20. In verse 20 it says, And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch speak to the Greeks, preaching the Lord Jesus. Then in verse 21 it says, And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed conversions and turned unto the Lord. Conversions, conversions. And I pray as you minister, as you preach, as you proclaim the word of the gospel, there will be conversions in Jesus' name. Before I go to the next point, try and answer this question in your mind. Look at your ministry. How many people can we point to, can give testimony that their lives were totally converted, totally transformed by coming to your church, by hearing you speak, by coming to your ministry, by participating in your ministry? How many of them can say, I was like this before, my character at home? my character in the office, my character in the community. I was like this before. Everybody knew I was a ruffian. But now, after hearing you declaring the word, after hearing you ministering to them, their lives have now turned around. That's what you need to aim for in ministry. There will be conversions through your ministry. Yeah. I said there will be more conversions throughout your ministry. And multitudes will turn unto the Lord in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two now. Point number two, the profitable purpose of the word of his grace. The profitable purpose of the word of his grace. There's the word of the gospel, number one. There's the word of his grace, number two. In Acts chapter 14, Verse 3, Acts 14, verse 3, Long time, therefore, I bold thee speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace. That's the word you find in the Acts of the Apostles, in the word of grace, grace for salvation, grace for sanctification, grace for sustainability, and grace that is sufficient, and grace that moves them forward in the strength of the Lord. And those preachers of the New Testament, they need to preach, you know, the, just the words of condemnation, and the words of sin, and the lives of the people. They brought in the grace of God, and God gave testimony unto the words of his grace, and granted signs and wonders that's what they done by their hands. In chapter 13, we're reading from verse 26. Chapter 13, verse 26, men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, whosoever among you feareth God to you is this word of this salvation saint, the word of grace and the word of of salvation and i pray that word will never leave our mouth in jesus name i pray that the word the word of power the word of strength and the word that brings transformation will come to every life and through you will get to other people too in jesus name The three things we're looking at here. Number one, the powerful proclamation of the word of his grace. Number two, the purposeful possession of the wonders of his grace. Number three, the present perception of the wealth 
of his grace. Number one. Number one is the powerful proclamation of the word of his grace. Proclamation. The preacher is like a salesman. He's promoting a particular commodity. And he comes to a prospect. Somebody he wants to introduce the commodity to. And he says, I'm a salesman. Look at this community uh, commodity. Do you like it? He doesn't know whether he likes it or not. You have not told him what that thing will do. Will you take it? He doesn't know. Whether what he has already is better than the one you are promoting, he can't tell whether he'll take it or not. Can you pay the price and get this commodity? I don't know. How can he pay the price? What if the thing becomes useless? If you are going to preach, you need to convince the people. And you need to presage the word in such a powerful way they are convinced. And before you finish the saying, give it to me. I'm going to see it cost. And then you tell them the cost. The cost is very simple. Turn away from the past and turn to the priest of peace and turn to the Lord. He says, I'm ready to do that. It's a powerful proclamation of the word of his grace. Let's look at uh, chapter 4 of Acts and we're looking at verse 33 and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. They themselves had the grace to do, the grace to perform, the grace to fulfill the word of God they were preaching. And then when they proclaimed that word, they proclaimed that word with grace. The word of his grace. Look at Romans chapter, one, chapter 5, reading from verse 1. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, then in verse 2, it says, in verse 2, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, saving grace, into this grace, sanctifying grace, into this grace, sustaining grace, into this grace, strengthening grace, into this grace, helpful grace, hopeful grace that brings you into all the desires and the declarations of the word of God by faith. We are brought into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, we're looking at verse 32. Acts, chapter 20, we're looking at verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God. I transfer you to God. I put you in the hands of God. Our preaching must lead people away from us unto the Lord. If you're preaching, if your proclamation, if your ministry only gets the people attached to you, and without you they cannot drink water, without you they cannot take breakfast, without you they cannot go to the restroom, they, come and, they must come and take permission from our pastor, our leader, I want to go to the restroom, is that all right? I want to do this, is that all right? I want to take my lunch, is that all right? I want to travel to my village, is that all right? I want to go and see mommy and daddy, is that all right? They're not asking God. They're not attached to God, they're attached to you. That's not a good ministry. A good ministry is to commit them unto God. That you win them from yourself. And you, fail, you make them face God. It's the God of heaven who can give them salvation, sanctification, and strength, and power, and everything they need. So you make sure that as you're preaching, as you're ministering, you're turning their eyes away from you. And you're turning their eyes onto the God of heaven. And Paul the Apostle said, Now, brethren, I commend you to God 
and to the word of his grace. The word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Let's look at number two there. Number two there, the purposeful possession of the wonders of his grace. We must possess the wonders of his grace. The word leads to the wonders. The wonder of salvation. The wonder of a new life. The wonder of a higher life going higher and higher. The wonder of progress in our lives. If we are just ministers of the world, professors of the world, and then we do not have the wonders of his grace, that means not much. But the word makes us purposeful, possessors, of the wonders of his grace. Acts 14, verse 3, long time therefore abode this speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. That's the evidence we have the word of his grace because the word of his grace leads us to the wonders of his grace. It tells us in Romans chapter 15, reading from verse 15, it says, Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort, as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God. Grace, grace that is given as and you will be given grace, grace today, more grace today, mighty grace today, marvelous grace today. The Lord grant unto you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, for I will not declare, will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. By word, not empty word, and deed. By word and the performance of that word. Verse 19, in verse 19, through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. I pray grace will work mightier in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. In First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. A believer, by the grace of God, I am what I am. A preacher, by the grace of God, I am what I am. A conqueror, by the grace of God, I am what I am. A bold soldier of Jesus Christ, by the grace of God, I am what I am. An evangelist, by the grace of God, I am what I am. A leader, an effective leader, leading people higher and higher in their lives, all by grace, by the grace of God. I am what I am. And His grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God. Somebody shout, the grace of God. The grace of God. You'll have more. The grace of God. The grace of God. Marvelous. You will have it. The grace of God. The grace of God. Which was with me. Constant companion. Which was with me, constant helper, which was with me, and the one that makes you 
get up early in the morning and then you say praise the lord today is going to be greater than yesterday Amen. in your life Amen. in your family Amen. in your ministry Amen. all by the grace of god it will come in jesus name Amen. now before i go on it appears it may rain and if where you are it's raining and then you don't have the courage and the boldness to look up to say thank you god i need that refreshing of the rain if you are not able to say that and sit down there then you need more grace but when you have grace multiple grace more grace marvelous grace and the rain is falling there and you say i can take more i can have more that's grace i was in one of the states in the east that is southeast were having crusade the governor of the state was seated on the platform and then i started to preach and when i started preaching the rain started coming down and then i said point one point two the rain was falling point three and then after point three i gave the conclusion and after that conclusion i said now you want to receive the lord as your personal savior everywhere you are and the rain was falling raise up your hand they raised up their hands I said, you are going to take a step of faith. You come out here. And they came to the front. And then I prayed for them. I said, we're going to take the names of the people. And the rain was falling. And they all stayed there. They had grace. You will have grace. Amen. And then I said, we're going to pray for the sick now. There was one young man there. He came from the village. When he was preparing to come to the crusade in the capital, the uh, father died that morning. And then he closed his box. He picked up the box. They said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to the crusade. Your father died. He said, yes, when I come back, I'll take care of that. They said, what kind of boy is this? What kind of son is this? Your father just died. And then uh, you must hear God more than, more than you hear the earth. Uh, Give me a good amen. amen. And then, I didn't know that anybody was there whose father had died. And then I said, now we're going to pray while the rain was coming down. I said, in Jesus' name, any need we have, any problem we have, solve the problem. And when we said the final amen, the father in the village rose up. What he I was more afraid of the rain than of doing the will of God. That's why I tell you, if the rain falls while I'm talking to you, every drop of rain will be a sign, a wonder in your life. And now, we're talking about the purposeful possession of the wonders of His grace. Look at that again. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But not, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I. But the grace of God, which was with me. And I pray the grace of God will be a constant companion in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's look at point number three now. Point number three, we're looking at the present perception. The present perception of the wealth of His grace. I pray you will possess in the present time. And all through your ministry, you will possess that wealth of the grace of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Acts chapter 11, 
verse 23 who when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they will cleave unto the Lord. If the grace of God that drives us closer unto the Lord, fire burns, that fire gets us nearer to God. Persecution comes, that grace gets us nearer to God. And the vicissitudes of life, different situations and circumstances in life, they come and those things drive us nearer and closer unto God. That grace will abound in your life. Amen. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. In Titus chapter 2, verse 11, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. It has appeared unto me. I said it has appeared unto me. That's what we need. That's what we need. You know, all the problems that may be there, the grace of God will appear unto you. Amen. For healing, the grace of God will appear. Amen. For deliverance, the grace of God will appear. Amen. For strength and for courage and for boldness, the grace of God will appear unto you. Amen. At every crossroad, on the day of any challenge, any trial, any temptation, while you say, what will I do? The grace of God will just appear. Amen. And you'll have strength, you'll have might, and you'll have all the power you need in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. We're coming to number three now. Number three, we're looking at the prevailing power of the word of God. Prevailing power of the word of God. Three things. Number one, perseveringly reaffirming the word of God. Number two, personally receiving the word of God. Number three, permanently repossessing the word of God. Look at number one. Number one is prevailing, is perseveringly reaffirming the word of God. Perseveringly. When you're sick, perseveringly. When you are up, perseveringly. When you are tired, perseveringly. When it appears you cannot take another step forward, you're still reaffirming the word of God. Yeah, that means you can keep on constantly confessing uh, the word of God. The word of God I can do. All that God says I can do. The word of God I can do. All things through Christ who strengthens me. The word of God I will not die but I will live. The word of God, the grace of God will see me through. You are reaffirming, reaffirming the word of God all the time. Look at Acts chapter 1 verse 1. <clears throat> Acts chapter 1. Reading from verse 1. The former treatise have I made with your fellows. The former treatise have I made O Theophilus, Luke wrote the gospel according to Luke. That's what he refers to as the former treatise. And now he says, of all that Jesus began but to do and to teach, what Jesus began to do and to teach, he was not going to write the Acts of the Apostles. The Acts continuing as of Christ. The acts continuing as of the Holy Ghost. And when Jesus had begun and he had done, those apostles, they were to follow. And you will notice something here you know, when you, you can check up on your own. At the end of Matthew, you have Amen. At the end of Mark, you have Amen. At the end of Luke, you have Amen. At the end of John, you have Amen. For the acts of the apostles at the end, they have not closed it with amen. We are to continue where they started. You continue. The same power, the same strength, 
the same authority, the same courage, and the same boldness where they stopped, but to have grace and continue from there. I will continue. I will continue. You are perseveringly reaffirming the word of God. Look at chapter 8, verse 4. In chapter 8, verse 4, Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. They went everywhere preaching the word. Christ started, he began to do and to teach, and then the apostles picked it up from there, and they continued, and then all the believers, they went abroad, they went everywhere preaching the word. That's the same thing you are going to do. And the same power will follow you. The same strength will follow you. Don't say, don't say, don't say, I cannot because you will. Because you must. You can. I can. I can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. What God says you ought to do, he knows you can do it. He'll give you all the power. And all those people that were scattered abroad and as were scattered to everywhere in our state, everywhere in our country, everywhere in our continent, everywhere in the world, this word of God will continue being proclaimed through you in Jesus' name. Amen. And the benefit of the word you will have, the blessings of the word you will have, and then you'll share those benefits of the word even to the people in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at the last chapter now, chap last chapter, but chapter 28, and we're reading from verse 30, chapter 28, we're looking at verse 30, how Paul, the apostles still continued. This is the very last chapter, and these are the very last verses, and it says, and Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, and received all that came unto him. And then in verse 31, preaching the kingdom of God. Last verse of Acts of the Apostles, preaching the word, the kingdom of God, and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Amen. No man forbidding him. Amen. No man forbidding him. Amen. Why? Chapter 4, he tried to forbid them. But he said, no, we have commandment from heaven. Chapter 5, he tried to forbid them. He said, no, we're going to obey God. And then in chapter 6, the argued was Stephen, trying to shut him up. He continued. Chapter 7, and then he said, I see the heavens open. Chapter 8, they scattered them. They persecuted them. And they go on. And eventually, Satan said, there's no point. The more fire you bring on them, the more fervency they have. If they, you know, they were losing on every ground. The devil will lose on every ground. You know, if they say, oh, tell you, shut up there. If you shut up, you are finished. I pray you will not be finished. But if they say shut up and you shout louder. If we say stop there and then you move further. If they say, did it we tell you? And then you keep on going on, they'll be tired before you are tired. Amen. That's how life works. That's how life works. When you say something to somebody, don't do that. It keeps on going. Don't do that. It keeps on don't do that. He keeps on doing it. And he's gathering more strength and more courage and more joy in what he's doing. Uh, the, the fellow is saying, stop it, stop it, stop it. Uh, he'll be getting sad and sadder if there's any word like that. And then eventually he will get tired. All your persecutors will get tired. Yeah. All the people that are forbidding you, they will get tired. Yeah. Until the very last chapter of your life and the very last verse of your life and the very last day of your life you keep on preaching the wonders of the word in Jesus name 
Look at number two here. Number two here is personally receiving the word of God. Personally receiving the word of God. When you hear the word of God, it will tell you subject. And you say, that's me. That's for me. Salvation, that's for me. Sanctification, that's for me. Holiness, that's for me. Healing, that's for me. Deliverance, that's for me. Dominion, that's for me. When you personally receive the word of God, you'll be going higher and higher in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 2 of Acts, verse 41. And then they that gladly received this word were baptized. And the same day, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And those people, they continued, they continued, they continued steadfastly in the word, in fellowship, and in doctrine. And I pray the grace to continue, the Lord will grant unto you. Amen. Number three, number three here is the permanently repossessing the word of the Lord. That now as we come and we look at the book of Acts and those apostles and those disciples, the strength of their life, the power behind them, the support behind them is because of the word of God that went through from the beginning up to the end. And when the word of God goes through in your life like that, nothing in will defeat you. Now, you'll check up on your own, your preachers and your Bible believers yourself. The word of God is like milk. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2. Like milk. But the milk must be fresh. The milk must not be contaminated. The milk must not have any other thing there that will destroy the strength and the power of the meat. And you personally possess that in your life. Number two, it is food. That's in Luke chapter 4 verse 4. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word, every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The word, the word is water, water. But that water must not be mixed with the erosion, with the flood, with the gutter water. It must be clean water that comes to you, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, and that he may present unto himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any sort of thing, but that it should be holy and uh, it should be upright. And the word of God is like meat, meat, strong meat. You have taken the milk of the word, you have taken the water of the word, and you have taken the food of the word, and now the strong meat that you have that the Lord will give to you. And the word of God says that the word is like honey. You put some honey there in that tea, put some honey there in that um, in that uh, thing uh, that you are going to drink. That's in Psalm 119, verse 103. And the word of God is health. That word health there in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 22. If you look at the margin, it says it's like medicine. Medicine. That is the medicine you take every day and you become stronger and stronger. I'm talking to somebody there. Stronger and stronger in Jesus' name. It says those words are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Number seven, it is light. When the way is dark, which way should I go? Which path should I take? The word of God will be like light on your pathway. You will not miss your way. But you know, if you are not, you stay in the dark and you know where to turn on the light. It's at the wall. They just, just click it on there and light will come. Everything you are searching for, when the light comes, you will discover. And the same thing in life. That's when we turn on the light of the word of God. Everything we're looking for in our personal life, in our profession, in our marriage, in our family. Everything you're asking for that will make you to have progress, you will have in Jesus' name. Amen. First Peter chapter 1 verse 23 says the word is like siege 
that is sown. And that seed is sown in your heart. But if you sow the seed and you dig it up and sow it and dig it up and sow it and dig it up, it will not bear fruit. Let the seed remain there. Your life will be fruitful. Amen. I'm looking for somebody there. I said his life will be fruitful. Amen. I'm looking for a mother there, a sister there, a daughter there. And I say your life will be fruitful in Amen. Jesus' name. In, Je in Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 29, the word is like fire. And uh, you know, you, many of us, you know what happens on the farm, and you bring all those uh, weeds together, and then you set it on fire. All the snakes, all the rabbits, all the things inside that uh, bush or something, as you set it on fire, what will happen to them? They will be running here and there, and when the fire of the word comes in your life, any spirit, any power, any demon, anything that ought not to be there, even as I'm talking now, they're going away. Yeah. I said they're going away. Yeah. It's not my word, like I say, fire, says the Lord. And then number, number 10 is like hammer. And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Any rocky thing in your life, any rocky thing in the lives of the people you are speaking to, all those things, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. The hammer of the word, the power of the word that will shatter, that will destroy every rock in your life. Look at your life today. Whatever is there, and that thing is standing like a mountain, and that thing is saying, I am here, I will destroy you. Don't worry. The hammer of the word comes, and it will shatter everything. I see those enemies going out. I see those powers coming out. And I see all those things that would have wrecked your life and ruined your life. The word has come to you today. And the word takes you out of their hand in Jesus' name. Let me tell you, when the Lord created you, he had a purpose, he had a goal. And it is not a goal of mediocrity. It's not a goal of being uh, sealed in a den or in a valley. God made a place for you at the peak of the mountain. But then, uh, since we came uh, to this world, the people that didn't know your destiny, they didn't know where you ought to reach, they put something on you, they say, our children are not this high. What should you, child, son, daughter of Mr. So and so, go beyond our children? And they try to dig a hole. They didn't kill you, but they put you there to live a useless life. And they sealed it up. And now, God looks from heaven and he says, That's so and so. That's not the place I made for you. Your place is still waiting for you on the top of the mountain. He opens that thing. He pulls you out. He sets your feet on the rock. He said, look up. Look up. Look up. That's your place. And he gives you wings to fly. They are coming up. And you will not stop till you get to the top of that mountain. And the word is a shield. The Lord will shield you. Every arrow that comes, the Lord will shield you. And the word is like a sword. There's a sword in your mouth, not in your hand, in your mouth. Anything that comes against you, when you speak, that sword will pierce them. The army of the Lord now is standing up. The army of the Lord is now moving. Let all the enemies of progress clear out of their way in Jesus' name. Reach 
for the top. Reach for the mountain where the Lord created for you. Open your mouth and say, Lord, I am here. It is the word, it is the word, it is the word that will transform you and that will transfer you there and that will take you there. Open your mouth, open your mouth and say, Lord, I'm ready. Lord, I'm ready. The word in your heart. The word in your mouth. The word on your steps. The word in your plan. The word on your path. The word, the word, the word is in your brain. It's in your mind. It's in your spirit. It's in your heart. It's in your life, it's in your prayer, the word, it's in your preaching, the word saturates your life. And then the mountain that you're supposed to climb, the destiny, the destination, the place you're supposed to be, the word, the word, the word, the word is lifting you up, it's taking you up. And the world is preparing you for that place you ought to be. You have not done anything yet. The past is just a preparation ground. What you have done, what you have achieved, what progress you have got, it's just a platform to spring up. To launch out and you launch out like a rocket with the word of God the word the meal will soothe all the pace of your life the water will soothe all the dryness of your life the food was strengthen your weakness. The meat will put back bone, new flesh in your body. The honey will make your life sweet. The light will clear every darkness out of your way. The seed will bring fruit in your life. The fire will drive away all those demons, all those diseases. The hammer will break every rock in pieces in your life. And the shield will protect you, preserve you. Greater heights Greater achievement, greater possession, greater victory, higher ground. And the sword of the Spirit will pierce will destroy everything that stands before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Look at the past. Look at all the water that is gone under the bridge. Look at all the tears of the past, all the sorrows of the past, all the pains of the past, all the defeats of the past, all the regrets of the past. Now, by the word, we are crossing over. In your life, in your family, your ministry, 
in your church you today by the word the word of his grace the word of the gospel the word of God the word of power the word of promise the word of prophecy in your life what I declare now upon your life will be fulfilled that purpose the Lord created you for your life your ministry that he put you here on earth that purpose will be fulfilled in Jesus name. whatever have closed your eyes you couldn't see and you are following the crowd and you are following them the destiny is not your destiny your goal is not their goal the peak of the mountain for you is not the same as theirs God called Abraham alone and he blessed him and he promoted him but today the hand of the Lord is singularly upon you. He will lift you up. He will promote you. He will clear the way before you. The sorrow of the past is gone. The failure of the past is gone. Today will be the beginning of the new world. Where is the person I'm talking to? Father, we well, thank you. Father, we well, bless your name. This solemn moment, we we'll receive the wonder of the world, the wealth of the world. We we'll receive the peculiar thing you've made for us in your word, in Jesus' name. Thank you, because we're still alive. We've gone through a lot in the past. We've felt a lot in the past. Pain in the past. Much water under the bridge in the past. But now, the gate is open. The way is open. The way into new life. The way into a new ministry. The way into a new power. The way into a new possession. And the way to the peak of the mountain in Jesus' name. Lord, block away for my memory, for my mind, all the things of the past holding us down. Open the pages of the scriptures for us. Let your word penetrate every heart and every life. Lord, anywhere we need conversion, conversion from timidity unto strength and power, conversion from hopelessness unto hope, conversion from mediocrity to mastery. Oh Lord, let there be conversions everywhere in Jesus' name. Conversion from being a grasshopper to being a giant. Conversion from being a person they are always pushing and pushing to the wall to somebody who now stands up straight and firm and powerful against every enemy. Conversion, total conversion in Jesus' name. Conversion from crime to conquer. Conversion from weeping into the wisdom of God. Conversion from a man of the past, a woman of the past, to a man, a woman of the present hour. Conversion from sickness unto health. Conversion from a demotion unto promotion. Conversion from deliverance unto dominion. I pray, Lord, today, everyone will rise up. New life, new love, new light, new legacy, and new progress for every life. 
and that word the Lord has spoken to your heart will bear fruit. Amen. We will hear your testimony. Amen. Every part of this land we will see you conquering, conquering, conquering in Jesus' name. Amen. Go forth by the word. Let nothing stop you again. We'll meet on top of the mountain. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray.